wonder how long we'll have to wait before we can grade the morality of all the countries without a learning curve. I mean, look, I hear over and over again that it's just a matter of time, but nobody ever gives me that glorious win. And more importantly, nobody ever explains how shutting up the people who are talking about the problem will speed up that process. And why do I ask? Because I've got two stories for you this week, one about someone who couldn't wait and one about some folks who shouldn't have. If you haven't heard already, Kandil Baloch, a Pakistani model and social media starlet, was strangled to death by her brother last week in what they still call honor killing because misogynistic sororicide doesn't have a nice ring to it, I guess. Now, look, I'm not going to pretend I'd heard of her before this happened, but in the research I've done since she passed, you know who she reminds me of? Every goddamn girl in their 20s that I know. She posted selfies, took pictures of her cleavage, and wanted to be famous. She's been called the Kim Kardashian of Pakistan. And you know what learning that about her makes me think? There but for the grace of geographic location go my nieces, my cousins, and all of my fucking friends. Because when Baloch didn't follow her brother's request to start dressing like a garbage bag and stop expressing herself, he fucking murdered her. Her brother was caught and admits to the murder, but the most disgusting part about this is that there's a clause in Pakistani law that would allow him to get off scot-free if her family decides not to press charges. And according to everything I've read, that's a fairly common occurrence in Pakistan. But there's kind of a mitigating circumstance here in that it's fucking Pakistan, winner of the scathing atheist worst place to exist as a human award. I don't like it, I don't understand it, but at least I'm prepared for it. There aren't many look how fucked up the society is towards women headlines I can imagine where I would say, what, not Pakistan? But that excuse doesn't hold for my second piece of news this week. This one is so mind-boggling that I'm going to have to get all pissed off and incredulous despite the fact that it's good news. Earlier this week, the head of the United Nations Populations Fund has, for the first fucking time, called female genital mutilation child abuse. I mean, kudos and all, but really? For the first time? What exactly were you waiting on? What the fuck kind of data could you possibly be holding out for? Proof that the clitoris never turns into a hentai monster and devours its lovers? Or were you just too busy jerking off to that to be bothered? But I digress, because progress, no matter how belated, is to be celebrated. Even though convincing the UN that mutilating your kid's genitals is child abuse is apparently as tough as explaining to Eli why poisoning the mayor of Valdosta, Georgia isn't an acceptable part of a prank war. And while you ponder why the UN treats women's rights like the porridge from Oliver, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.